Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today and welcome back to another All Things Data OpenShift Commons briefing. Today we have special guests. Siggy Volkoff is joining us again, our Chief Storage Performance Instigator in Storage. And Greg Smith and Chirag Dave from Crunchy Data are joining us today as well. We really are excited to hear about uh, all the performance testing that has been done between Crunchy Data and the OpenShift Container Storage team. So Siggy, please take it away. Good morning or evening or afternoon, uh, everyone. Let's just start with the, uh, with the slides. Um, we're going to do a very 60 seconds brief intro that is not needed for Postgres. Our folks from uh, Crunchy are going to talk about the Crunchy operator. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about why use uh, uh, OpenShift Container Storage for with uh, Crunchy. Uh, and then I'll talk about the, the testing that was done, talking about the layouts, numbers, and all of that. And we'll leave a few minutes for questions if there's uh, anything. So Postgres, um, a very old and trusted uh, uh, database, uh, really no need to uh, introduce. Um, massive community of uh, source developers that are uh, actively contributing. Um, and one that is not owned by um, a company on the West Coast and support for SQL, no SQL, very strong concurrency. Um, and yep, everyone knows uh, Postgres. So now let's, uh, I'll give it to uh, Greg and he'll uh, talk about uh, the Crunchy operator. Great. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Greg Smith. I'm the director of open source strategy for Crunchy Data. Uh, we like to give people just a brief outline of things because if, if you're not working inside of the Postgres community, it can be a little confusing as to what's going on. So uh, we like to give people uh, an overview from our perspective and why, why we think it's good to know all this for Kubernetes and uh, this type of deployments. So Crunchy is the top company supporting pure open source Postgres. And by that, I mean, we don't have any commercial or closed sourced uh, projects. It's all open. And we've expanded to where the majority of new community Postgres code passes through Crunchy on its way to commit. And then we have a stack of, adash, of additions to that base available, you know, which goes all the way up to the operator and then features on top of that. Um, the, the thing that we think makes it particularly well suited, uniquely suited really for this type of project is that Postgres is free software in every way. It's BSD licensed, it has a democratic process for changes. Uh, I like to think of Postgres as being the most like Linux. You know, there's a lot of different companies working together and they all review and commit each other's submissions and then that community creates a shared core kernel. Commercial vendors spin their own distributions based on. Now, Red Hat ships a perfectly fine Postgres in Fedora and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, the idea is if you use Crunchy's certified Postgres instead, uh, you add some auditing and security features. And then if you add our operator, that's the next step to picking up crunchy best practices for administration and scale out. In the last few years, our Postgres-based approach has really gelled uh, well with uh, all the people who are looking to do cloud database migrations to shrink their data centers and that sort of thing. Um, the, the Kubernetes um, has worked particularly well for that, and the operators are the preferred way to set up and manage that sort of cloud. Um, this is this is real stuff in production. We have production customers using uh, hundreds of crunchy containers, doing work in and out every day. You know, Fortune 500 companies you you'd know by name if I could talk about them. And uh, what everyone likes is that by being true open source software, that makes our approach great for any kind of hybrid proud people want. 
you know, maybe some of it's on AWS, maybe some of it's on their local servers, uh, even customers in secured locations with air gaps and stuff like that, uh, people that build only from like trusted source codes, they're able to pull all of our code in and recompile it because everything's open source. There's no kind of gating um, bits to the whole thing. Um, we think it's an important point because um, as we see it, Kubernetes just dislikes commercial licensing for the fundamental infrastructure pieces. And in a cloud environment where the exact number and distribution of servers deployed is, is constantly changing, um, commercial database licenses in particular can be a real hard fit. Uh, what's nice with Postgres is we do have a wide range of features, you know, all the way to things like uh, the NoSQL, Segi was just mentioning, you know, we, we, have, we have a very wide range of apps you can deal with in Postgres, and it's an open license. You never have to worry about that when you're doing your computation and setup. As for why to use an operator, um, at one point we really spent a lot of time trying to package our database products into Kubernetes. When, when, I, first read the, when I first read the initial Cube blog that was introducing operators back in late 2016, that was really a light bulb moment for us. I said, this, this state-driven architecture it's immediately struck me as the right way to organize this, this type of problem, and we've, we've jumped right into it as fast as we can. Um, we started out by covering the most urgent database foundations. So we think of that as being replication and backups, you know, things where, especially in the kind of less reliable than bare metal uh, situations the cloud gives you, you really need to make sure your backups and everything are great. Step one before you do anything else. And then we work our way up the stack from there. Lately, there's been this another burst of commercial open source softwares that seems like they're going the other way. I mean, some of the some of the projects like Redis and Mongo are kind of re-engaging their customers with cloud-based license restrictions. The whole thing's kind of weird. But the, the point that we like to emphasize with Postgres, there is no one company that owns the entirety of the Postgres code. It's owned by the group that does the development. You know, Crunchy's as big as anybody, but even we can't just go in and change Postgres or take it over, or relicense it or anything. It's a true community project like Linux, and that makes it a reliable base that people can build on without having to worry about it going away because, you know, some, ver some VC person changes their mind one day. Uh, we don't have that problem in Postgres. So what the, what the operator has let us do, we've had three years of development on it with a busy team, and we don't just publish the code, you know, we're, we're doing the full eating your own dog food style here. Many of our projects are operator based, we're doing production customers on the operator, and we keep adding more and more user interfaces uh, to hard parts of the database like setup and monitoring, um, you know, and once you've got all these basic things together that everybody wants, I mean, everybody wants high availability, provisioning, failover, all this other stuff. And once you get them all that, then that lets people move to a higher level of actually building real database applications. And um, the way Postgres works, because it's all open, you can make all your own modifications to any level you want, which is how we get to um, being able to make substitutions for the storage underneath and have Postgres just be fine with that. And that takes us right back to uh, the, the rest of our talk. So uh, back to you. Thanks for your time. All right. Thanks, Greg. I guess you got a beta coming up. <laughs> yeah, we have a, another beta. I mean, we're just, we're starting to get into more complicated features. Like there's a lot of security related stuff where people are going, oh, we want, you know, secure connections to work over this type of thing. But then you discover the connection pooler doesn't work. I mean, these are the sort of things you discover after you build the initial demo and go, okay, wait a minute. You know, there's some things that just don't work together quite like you expect them to. So we just, we just keep cranking out releases, smoothing over as many of those hard parts as we can. The idea being, once we get them done, you don't even need to know about these weird problems with, you know, TLS protocol and how it interacts with the two connection poolers. You know, we're just trying to hide higher and higher levels of code with each new release. Cool. 
I just noticed the hippo as your logo. <laughs> so um, let's continue to talk about the performance testing uh, uh, we have done. Uh, and the first, just a little bit um, of why we have uh, done this. So the first reason is, is that in uh, OpenShift Container Storage 4.3, we are uh, uh, actually introducing as a technology preview, um, a feature called Direct Attach uh, Storage. And this um, this feature basically uh, uh, connects a, a physical device, whether on bare metal or virtualized on the cloud, into uh, the the pod, the OSD pod that is actually um, uh, uh, using it and providing the storage for other applications. Um, so the testing that I uh, done here are basically on a, a OpenShift Container Storage 4.2. Um, uh, kind of a, uh, you can say almost 4.3 version with this direct attach uh, uh, feature. Why use uh, uh, OpenShift Container Storage for Crunchy? If you notice, a few of the slides mentioned uh, uh, have availability uh, features from uh, the Crunchy operator. Uh, well, the, the main feature is, uh, the main reason is that uh, you might not only run uh, the crunchy operator, or you might not only run a Postgres database, you might run various uh, different types of a, a database, um, or uh, you have other needs that needs a persistent storage and needs uh, uh, resiliency. And so uh, OpenShift Container Storage uh, basically provide a, the, this resiliency um, to all application that need their persistent uh, storage, among them uh, Postgres via the uh, Crunchy uh, operator. Of course, OCS4 fully integrated with the uh, uh, OpenShift4. Um, and um, that's why we have kind of uh, uh, the two companies uh, partner together to, to bring this up. All right, so let's now talk about the testing uh, layout. Uh, all of this was done on AWS. Um, only uh, six nodes, uh, IPPI OpenShift clusters, um, three of the nodes are what I call the uh, worker application nodes. These are of type uh, M54X. Uh, they are dedicated to the applications that the cluster will run. In our case, these are the, uh, uh, the, the Postgres databases. Um, each of these nodes, 16 CPUs, 64 gig of RAM. We have a, a, another set of nodes, three uh, nodes of the type i3en.2x, uh, which are from the OpenShift perspective, worker nodes, uh, but they are con uh, in my testing considered to be storage uh, nodes, meaning they are running OpenShift container storage for, uh, and that's the only thing that they are running. Of course, besides the, any other minimal uh, pods that needs to be run by uh, OpenShift. Uh, each of these nodes is with eight uh, cores, 64 gig of RAM, um, each of these virtual machines, I should say, and they, um, uh, each of these VMs have uh, two direct attach uh, uh, NVMe uh, devices. So we have basically a total of uh, six devices for the uh, OpenShift container storage uh, cluster or the Ceph cluster that is uh, being used. Uh, um, in, in this configuration. Each um, uh, worker application node is running three Postgres or three Crunchy single instance uh, clusters. So we have a total of, uh, uh, of nine. And the tests were uh, uh, ran in two configurations. So there's actually two clusters, uh, one on a single zone on AWS and uh, one of the strengths of uh, uh, OpenShift Container Storage 4 is the ability, the ability to do a uh, cross-zone uh, storage uh, replication. So single zone versus multi-zone. Um, each uh, a crunchy instance or each Postgres uh, database was restricted to four CPUs and 16 gig of RAM uh, via Kubernetes uh, resources, which means we have a total of 12 CPUs and 48 gig of RAM per uh, worker application node. So we uh, left uh, um, about 25% uh, of the resources or 20 or 25% of the resources in each of these nodes for anything that might, you know, uh, that uh, uh, OpenShift itself or Kubernetes itself might need. Um, benchmark tool. 
usually um, most people with uh, Postgres like to use uh, PG Bench, uh, but um, I've uh, chosen uh, this bench. Few reasons: um, it does emulate a, um, a more realistic, let's say, uh, web application uh, form of uh, uh, IOs. Uh, with a lot of pre uh, random processing of um, um, of, of uh, all kinds of uh, data, um, it's very easy to, uh, from the storage perspective, it's very easy to uh, um, ma make the uh, a workload run in a manner of the uh, 70, 30, 70 reads, 30 percent uh, writes uh, IO pattern, which is usually what uh, you most people do for general testing of a storage uh, sus a subsystem. It is uh, um, uh, one thing that is actually not written here. Uh, it's also very easy to then uh, compare these results to uh, um, uh, the other uh, database that the sysbench was uh, for, which is uh, MySQL. And another thing is, which we'll, we'll discuss in future talk, is that um, it is very, uh, it's easier to show on, on uh, this bench uh, resiliency under load, um, mainly meaning that uh, this bench can sustain errors and continue to run. And in this way, in the future, we're going to show uh, together with the crunchy people that are actually working on the uh, code, um, how um, uh, the crunchy operator together with OpenShift container storage uh, uh, behave uh, when losing a, a crunchy pod or when losing a storage node or an OSD pod, uh, things like that. Each database is 100 gigabyte in size. It's 400 tables, 1 million rows each. Um, uh, each uh, sysbench uh, was ran with uh, six uh, threads. So each uh, to connecting to each uh, uh, Postgres pod. Um, and the usual about five minutes of uh, warning followed by 10 minutes runs of uh, 10 minutes each with the rest of uh, 60 seconds. That's about uh, the layouts. Let's talk about the, this is another uh, half a day for me uh, work to create these uh, <laughs> nice uh, graphics, but that's basically showing the difference between the uh, single availability zone and multi availability zone. Uh, um, showing where exactly uh, each of the storage nodes and application nodes uh, uh, resides. All right, so let's talk about a little bit about the, the uh, about the numbers. Uh, on the right side is a table that shows uh, an average of uh, uh, ten runs uh, from uh, uh, all the databases. Uh, the middle column is the average transaction uh, per database, which means we aggregated all the transaction divided by uh, the uh, number of uh, uh, runs, number of databases. Uh, the total cluster transactions is for that particular run, what we were able uh, uh, to achieve. And as you can see, there's, uh, we are showing the uh, latency per database uh, average, and even more important, the 95% uh, latency uh, uh, for, for these runs. Um, from the uh, you know performance perspective, um, in the, on the graph side, um, we do like to see things are, are more uh, on the steady side, and not too many uh, spikes on the line, which is uh, 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 really good. So this is on a uh, single zone, the performance uh, numbers. Um, these two are, uh, graphs uh, that I'm um, adding and showing here are talking about uh, a, a little bit of, uh, on the uh, inner level. On the um, left side is basically the, uh, these RBD one, two, three are basically the persistent volume claims that each node, as you can see, we have three nodes that are, uh, the, these are the uh, application nodes. Uh, these are the PVCs that each of these nodes uh, have. Each nodes have three PVCs attached to because each node is running three uh, uh, Postgres databases. Um, you can see clearly how the ratio between uh, the reads and writes is you know, roughly around the 70-30. Uh, um, on the right side, these are uh, um, 
the actual Ceph numbers or the usage or utilization of uh, OSD devices um, and, uh, from the three storage nodes. So if you remember, we have two NVMe devices in each of these uh, uh, storage nodes. And, and, and this is the utilization of between uh, reads and writes. Um, important to note this for, from Ceph perspective, uh, the more devices Ceph has, uh, the better it distribute uh, the load and better distribute uh, uh, the data. So this was single zone. Um, we'll go to uh, uh, multi-zone. And again, it's like a, uh, the, the previous uh, numbers that I show in single zone. Um, you have the average transaction per database and the total uh, transaction uh, per cluster. What is, uh, what you can quickly see in here, and, and you should be able to get all these slides and compare the numbers, is actually that, um, uh, multi-zone on uh, my testing is actually behaving faster than the single zone. Um, and now, uh, it's not uh, that uh, there's any kind of uh, OpenShift container storage uh, magic in here. It's just one of the uh, basic rules <laughs> testing on, uh, on the cloud is that the performance, when you are stressing the, no the VMs that you're using, the performance is just not uh, not very consistent. Um, logically, the single zone, which should have better latency between all the nodes, uh, should behave faster than nodes that are on three different zones uh, that also should have uh, um, uh, 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 higher latencies uh, between them. Uh, but again, um, and I always uh, uh, add that in my conversation about performance. Don't believe my numbers, uh, uh, go, and, uh, go and check it yourself. Um, but again, a steady number, even across uh, three availability zones. And, and, and as I said, uh, better numbers than a single zone. And the last uh, slide here is the same thing as uh, previously. Um, on the left side, these are the ratio of the read writes of the PVCs of each of the Postgres databases. And uh, um, that was on the left side. And on the right side, these are the read writes ratios of the uh, NVMe devices between the uh, nodes that are providing the storage. And I think that if there are any questions, we will be happy to answer them now. I had one quick comment I just wanted to make for people watching this, which is to note, um, I mean, you implied a little bit how you work to set this, this whole benchmark up, but I really want to emphasize to people that you picked a database that is a large multiple, like 16, 17 times the amount of RAM in the database. And, you know, you were doing a bunch of other things that are very high latency operations, like the replication among pods and that sort of thing. So those numbers, if people are looking at them and going, wow, that doesn't seem like particularly good transaction per second numbers, I would suggest think of them more as being like when vendors give you worst case IO, IO per second, IOPS num IOPS numbers. You know, these are more like that because you went out of your way to force the thing to like struggle and seek with this and whatnot. You didn't just run it and let it go with, you know, everything in memory, you know, which, which a lot of smaller databases do operate like that. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and just going back to here also, um, I don't have these numbers in here, but I, I can add them to the slides. Um, there are utilization percentage for, for example, for the NVMe devices, and um, they are in the higher 80s uh, to the lower 90s uh, and on each of the storage nodes. And again, um, like Greg said, and that is the difference basically between these two graphs on the left and the right, um, while the PVC, that uh, the Postgres or the Crunchy instance is using is uh, doing a single write, of course, with uh, OpenShift container storage, because of resiliency, we add two more writes because there are three copies. 
and and uh, and that and that's why you actually don't see this ratio on the right side of the of the graphs uh, of you know, be, between like 70 and 30 um, uh, 70 reads uh, 30 uh, percent uh, rights uh, ratio but and 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 also um, repeating Greg's point yes the goal here is to actually measure storage and not to measure uh, the memory or RAM of uh, an AWS uh, a virtual machine. And that's why the ratio between the size of the database and, and the RAM of each of these uh, Postgres database uh, is such. We are forcing actually um, uh, IO work to actually go down into the IO subsystem. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just want people to make sure that's what you're seeing and you understand the difference between it. I, it's a great job focusing at that thing. It's just, I know it can be a little tricky when you're your first time you stare at this graphs to make sense of it. So that that's how I think of your test. And I think it's very valuable to have gotten that information. So we appreciate your, your digging through this for so many weeks. Hi, this is Chirag. I would like to add another comment here. So this is a great solution if anybody is looking to run single instance Postgres with a replicated storage. Uh, but with Crunchy Operator, you could still have uh, Postgres HA natively available with your replica. So if you're looking for a read replica, uh, that is also possible with the operator. So if you combine OCS with the Postgres application, you have best of both worlds. You could have read replica plus storage replication. So I just wanted to add that. Well, thanks, Jarog. And Greg and Siggy, that was excellent. Just seeing those numbers, uh, it just makes it more real. Siggy, do you have instructions on how to run this? on your own the performance um, numbers yeah i um i need to compile this and i mean compile these instructions and and i'll put it out how to run this and then other people can uh, can do the same thank you all right so we'll do that as a follow-up to this to this video is instructions um posted to the openshift blog so look there for that yep. all right and thank you all again for another All Things Data, and same time next week. Thank you.